Hey everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel. I got another good video for you today. It's a stock that we all know about. Now I'm kind of biased to it because I'm in that ecosystem. And today we're gonna to talk about why I think it's time for you to take a bite out of Apple. Apple does a lot of things and they make a lot of money and they're able to invest in themselves and they can perpetually grow. So if you wanna find out why I think it's time to take a bite out of Apple, you sit right there. Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always glad to have you here, and I'm always glad to be here to bring these videos to you. If you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted that when a video like this or a live stream that we do is out there and ready for you to view. Don't forget, if you like the content, hit that like button, make it show me that it was worth your time to take the time to watch this video, and if you can, please Please share these videos to let people out there know that what we're doing here at VectorVest. All right, so let's talk about why I think it's time to take a bite out of Apple. What does Apple do? Well, we all know that Apple sells computers, phones, devices, big thing for them right now is the M1 chip. They make their own chips. There was a time when Intel was making the chips for them, but they're making their own chips, especially in a world and a time where chips are hard to come by. That's really awesome to make their own chips for their own products. And from what I understand, this chip is amazingly fast and good. So that just helps to bring um, Apple's uh, awareness to your attention so that they're, they're really good at what they do. But that M1 chip is going to play a big role in how they proceed forward. What else do they do? They sell services like Apple Care, music. A lot of people have music on Apple. Uh, if you want to be able to take that out and about, you can buy music on Apple as well. iCloud services, device. Man, there's nothing that Apple doesn't do to keep you in their ecosystem. True story. Um, it was a few years ago, my wife's iPhone phone was time to turn in or she broke it or something, lost it, whatever. And I said to her, I said, you know, if I was thinking about, you know, not being an Apple, I'd go with one of those Samsung billies, you know, da, da, da. She tried it. And because she was so deeply entrenched in the Apple ecosystem, it made it harder for her to have a phone outside of the Apple ecosystem. And I think that that's why a lot of us are biased to Apple is because of that ecosystem. All right, so now we've talked about that. Let's talk about how fundamentally sound they are. Let's go look at this. They've got a market cap of $2.4 trillion. That's a lot of money. And why is that important? Because when you're in a recession, to be able to float yourself and be able to supply your, all that stuff, that's a lot of money on hand. Revenues over the last year, $365 billion. Net income, 26%. Net profit, $95 billion. And their phones and their devices are not cheap, but people are willing to pay for a great product and in doing so, they are making money. And guess what? Almost 25% of managed portfolios hold Apple stock. If that's not enough, then wet your whistle and put the bees in your knees and the in the and, and whatever. I don't know what else it is. So I'm thinking that right now, and this stock has been beaten up recently, but I'm going to show you why it's time to take a bite out of Apple. All right, let's do this. Let's go find some news that I have on it. All right, let's start from there. Apple unveils the M1. Now, this is an older news story. Back in March, the, the chip is out now, but unveils the M1 Ultra, the world's most powerful chip for a personal computer. That's a bold statement. That shows that they're innovative. Well, we already know that they were innovative, but they've been coming even more innovative and in going ahead and beyond what the expectations are for the people in that ecosystem. What else? Today's news, investors finally get a glimpse of Apple volume hitting a figure of 75.8 million. There's a lot of people pushing the stock's price higher, which is another good reason why you should be taking a bite out of it. And then we've got professionals out there. I, Apple raises, as Bernstein raises, quarter three estimates citing strong supply, healthy Chinese demand. All right, as you go down, analyst Tony, that 
last name, raised his earnings per share estimates to $1.19 and revenue to $84 billion. And again, I just showed that the, the uh, most recent one was $95 billion as compared to the consensus of $82 billion and $1.15 in um, um, earnings. All right. Um, likely grew its services 12% year over year, even when accounting for a tough comparison. So there's a lot of things that are out there that makes me. And here's that ecosystem. I've got an iPad. I've got an iWatch. I've got a phone. I've got headphones. I got a MacBook. And a lot of people are just like me. Now, again, I sound biased, but you know what doesn't sound biased? Those numbers that I showed, that's what the company is actually doing. All right. Now, let's take a look at it from a VectorVest perspective. And now, because it's a chip, I wanted to uh, compare it to other chips in, or chip companies, semiconductor companies in the space. So I've got uh, Advanced Micro. I've got NVIDIA. I've got Apple. And of course, I've got Intel. And because I'm doing the video, guess what? It's the only one that's down today. But that's okay. Noticing that AMD and NVIDIA both have high relative value values based on a scale between zero and two. They've got better upside potential. But again, I think Apple's ecosystem is no joke. Now, remember, they're in the chip space, but they're outside of just the chip where Advanced Micro and NVIDIA are. And Intel is also in the computing space, um, but they also make chips as well. Let's go look at the earnings per share. Look at that. Apple's got the best earnings per share. And guess what? Um, the most expensive stock on the list is NVIDIA. It doesn't make as much as Apple does. Interesting, right? Uh, Intel, the laggard, uh, negative earnings growth, but they've got positive earnings. Let's scroll over a little bit more. Let's go look at Apple does pay a dividend with a dividend safety of 79. NVIDIA pays a, divi a dividend, a lower dividend, yep, but a dividend safety of 94. Intel pays a dividend with a dividend safety of 66. And remember, dividend safety is cast on a scale between zero and 99. Now, a lot of people always chase the dividend yield. Intel's got the biggest dividend yield at 3.7. Uh, but look at though 3.77, they're able to pay that dividend though. Look at their earnings yield. They make a lot more than the dividend yield. Apple, uh, earnings yield of four with a dividend yield of 0 0.62. So now it's not a whole lot of dividend yield, but they do pay a dividend and it is a safe dividend. Um, the biggest yield in here, if you want to chase yield, is Intel and they can pay for it nonetheless. All right. Um, let's go take a look at the graph of Apple first. Let's do that. View the graph. And there it is. Let's go put this on a six-month graph. I'll put it on a six-month graph. Apple has been beaten up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Here's the downtrend. What I like, look at that. Apple is now broken out of the downtrend, moving up. I'm looking at three, eight, and 20-day exponential moving averages. And notice that the stock is above all three, with the exception of the three with today. The big pullback down today, but still above the eight, still above the 20, and still above the trend line. Now, a couple of things that do catch my attention. Earnings growth, still at a rate of 20%, but moving lower. And the sales growth, the... Um, um, the fuel that drives the engine higher, sales growth is at eight, but pulling back over the last three months. So those two things do catch my attention. But if I'm looking short term right now, there's no denying the uptrend. There's no denying that it broke through the downtrend and that for the most part, it is above three uh, moving averages for the shorter term and for the longer term investor. Folks, this video is done, but I'm telling you that keep your eye on Apple. Uh, today is a down day. I wouldn't buy it today, but it is still a great viable stock. It's a good, solid company that makes and grows that money because they have people like me who are in that ecosystem. Again, folks, this video is over. And until the next time, see ya.